what we are going to do today, good morning again. What we are going to do today in this hour is, uh, first of all, finish speaking about need finding. Then we are going to see the assignment one that is online. Let's say today, the first version was online yesterday night. Um, and then we will do some exercise, let's say, about uh, need finding in preparation to uh, what you are going to do on Friday. Uh, but first of all, let's finish this. Uh, and let's speak about contextual inquiry. Contextual inquiry is observing while interviewing. It's an interview mixed with an observation or if you want to say in that way, it's a more powerful interview. So the basic things of the interviews hold. What's different is that while you are interviewing people, so you are setting up everything for an interview, like a normal speak only interview, you also ask people to do something. So not just speak, but also doing other things. So contextual inquiry clearly came from the inquiry of context. And inquiry is the interviews uh, plus asking the other person to do something. And so watch is the user as she perform their task and asking information. So it's actually observing plus interviewing. And the context is the natural environment where people are. So again, it's an interview because you ask people to do things mixed with an observation in which you ask people to also do things. So you observe people while asking things to them. Uh, so participants are observed and simultaneously talk about what they are doing. And Differently from interviews, uh, participants take a more active role in leading the session. And the metaphor that they usually have is the apprentice with the crafter, craftsman. So the apprentice is learning the, uh, the job from another person that is teaching the job. So the researcher, the one that conducted the contextual inquiry, is the apprentice. And the person that is observed is the craftsman, the person that teach something. So you learn, not only by asking, but also, again, by watching and observing what is happening. So versus interviews, why contextual inquiry are, let's say, better in some contexts than interviews? It's not possi always possible, again, to do contextual inquiries. There are moments in which you don't have an activity to observe. There are times in which you don't want to have artifacts, in which you don't want to see what happened. So interviews are fine. But when you can observe people in place, it's typically better to also have something more than just people speaking and you listening, and so showing what they do. Uh, so interviews, as you can recall for yesterday, rely on the people's ability to recall and explain a process that they are not doing in that moment. And this is happening by talking, typically. So people try maybe to summarize the process, as we did yesterday with the enrollment process for the exam. One of you told which are the steps to, to enroll to an exam, but we missed some points here and there some minor points on the tail. But some details can be left, and we, again, don't have the context, and we have a, an understanding of the activity of the processes, but it's sometimes superficial. Just what they remind to and tell, and just what, in that moment, they think is important to us to know. Uh, but in most cases, people can easily talk about, about what they're doing and why they're doing that while they are doing it. So since it's easy for us to talk and do, 
important way in talk. Contextual inquiry put together these two things. So that you can see the interruptions, the tricks, the workarounds that people have. Like in an observation, but uh, not only. Including all the questions that you have in the interviews. And while all the methods that we have seen yesterday are actually methods that can be mixed. You can do an observation followed up by an interview or a survey that follows an observation. You can mix these methods, but sequentially, so one before the other, contextual inquiry, inquiry put together two methods, that is observation in part and interviews for the large part. So contextual inquiry improves the results from the interviews because allow you to see what is happening and how it's happening and why it's happening. So allow you to go deeper in the, uh, in the process of the interview. And respect to the observation, uh, in some cases, uh, the direct observation works better than the contextual inquiry. Because in some cases, you don't have or you don't need some thoughts in depth of some processes. So here, there is an example. If you want to design an e-commerce page, you probably don't want, don't need any in-depth thoughts about the design of an e-commerce page. Because e-commerce pages are almost standards nowadays. So there is not really uh, extreme in-depth thought. So a normal observation could be fine, a normal uh, interviews probably could be also helpful. And then there are cases in which where people cannot be interrupted or distracted. Uh, think a doctor in hospital. You cannot interrupt the doctor, say, wait, explain to me what is, what's going on. Uh, because it's not, it's not a good moment to, to do that. So in this case, the observation is better because you just observe and don't interrupt. Clearly, when you have the possibility to also ask it's the, the amount of information you collect is bigger and possible more insightful for you. Uh, so when you cannot interrupt uh, or people, typically an observation followed by an interview is a good option so that you can also ask things but after observing everything. So contextual inquiry put really together the two things, interviews and observation, and as some downsides and risk. Uh, so first of all, participants try, try to go into interviews mode. Since you are interviewing them also, they will try to speak more and show, and show less. Uh, so they try to tell you what, what's going on before it is going on. So that is something that uh, who is managing the contextual inquiry should be careful to say, it's fine, but show me before telling me. Um, sometimes participal, participants might feel that you are looking for a feedback on all the problem of the system, uh, so they start complaining about what's not working and show you, oh, see, this is not working, this is not working, this is not working. Um, so it's more frustration with the current solution. But it's not your scope, because your scope is understanding people's thought and the processes, regardless of the specific solution. So yes, some things will not work, but you are not so interested in that. You are more interested in the process per se, more than find the bugs in the current solution. Uh, clearly, you can, can introduce biases, directing the observation, asking questions on specific part of the process. Um, and you can also bias the, the user. Uh, if you go deeper on some topic, maybe the person is inclined to uh, continue to speak about those topics because you express interest in those and avoid others. So it's always, um, you should be careful to balance the questions with what you are showing, etc. But with this risk and downside in mind, uh, contextual inquiry, inquiry is, in any case, a powerful tool because allow you to 
get in a certain point the benefits of an interview with the benefits of some observation. Clearly, again, observation plus interviews is something that you can, in any case, do separately. But this try to mix. And so you observe something, you ask, you ask, and then you ask to, to do something, etc. So this will allow you to put things in context more easily than just the interviews or just an observation. Okay, this was the last method of this need finding. Any question about this? What about yesterday? No. So before trying to do an exercise, let's try to, let's have a look at this, at assignment one. This is online, so you can clearly download it. So what is the assignment one? The assignment one is due next week on the 12th. And it's about need finding, clearly. And it's the first of the two cycle of need finding that we are going to do. And so this is the first round, then we will have a second round on finding smaller, more focused, that is assignment two. Uh, so in this case, we want to explore some user need within your team, your, the topic you selected. So here there is a step-by-step -step guide, let's say, of what you can do with some links if, it, if they are useful. So first of all, the first things we are going to ask you, you can start thinking about it, is select a domain of interest within your chosen theme. This means that tomorrow you will uh, submit the, the final version of the groups. On the 6th, uh, we are going to release the, the splits between groups and, and team and lab slots. And then on Friday, in your team, you can, first of all, select a domain of interest that specializes a little bit your team. So here there is an example. If the team is held, that is general as the other two, as the other three that we have, a specialization could be impact of diabetes on daily life. And that is health, but more focused. Or teenagers' nutrition. So in the first case, you focus more on a specific disease and a specific moment that is daily life and the impact of the disease on daily life, but keep the population, the target user, wide because it's not, say, young, it doesn't say the elderly, just say people with diabetes. The other side, you go down a little bit on the team because it's nutrition in health, not nutrition to, for other purposes, but nutrition for health, and you define better, in this example, the target users, the target teenagers. So you're not going to speak with not teenagers, mostly, because you focus on a specific population. And notice that these are still domain. They are not solution, they are not project. It's just a slighter, a narrower definition of the team. So, health is the general team. Impacts of diabetes could be one focus in the health team. Nutrition for teenagers in health perspective could be another. Physical activities for X could be another one, etc. If a team is something like transportation, it could be sustainability of public transport, or it could be women in public transit. So you can have this narrow down the team, narrow down the population, both. And this is something that you have to choose you can speak with the teacher of your team, because if it's not still, if it's not clear, maybe, 
every group will always see one single teacher in the labs. And we'll always speak with that person in the lab. So that person in that studio fashion that we defined in the first lecture is the person that is guiding all the team in that team, all the groups in that team. So in the term, team number one, you will have one teacher that will follow the entire process up to the end. Same things for the second, same thing for the third. And it's that person that will give you feedback. So if you are not in my group, in my team, in my slot of the lab, you will not get feedback from me. You will get feedback from the others. And same things for, for the entire process. So when you decide a domain of interest, check with the teacher of your slot if the domain is fine, is still is maybe smaller, it's too small, is already a project and shouldn't, etc. But the level should be this one. Nutrition for teenagers within health. This is more or less the level domain you can specify. And that's the first thing you, you have to do. You can start thinking about it if you want before Friday, clearly. Then the second thing is to clearly plan the interview. So as the need finding methods, we are going to ask you to do interviews, not survey, not observation, interviews. And you must interview at least three people. Not 100, three. Uh, even if, if you can, interview more than three people, it's better. And more means five, six, not 30. So slightly more than three people. But three is fine. If you are able to interview more, it's better probably for, it, for the information that you want to, to get from them. And these three people, or these people you're going to interview, should belong to different types that means what, we, what I mentioned to you, not yesterday, but last week, uh, so thinking not just about the immediate user, but also about the extreme users. Think about all the possible stakeholders involved in your domain. Hmm? So I make you the example the other day of the IDEO team that need to redesign a cart for grocery shopping, and they speak with shoppers, they speak with um, the managers, they, they speak with the professional shoppers, etc. So other stakeholders that are clearly involved in that process that can bring different perspective to the problem per se. Hmm? Clearly also the one that are the, the, the most immediate user. And you should do, should structure, should think which are the types, the groups of people you want to interview. One maybe it could be the intermediate user, and others. Uh, so the set of interview, and here there is a, a limitation, a constraint. The set of interview can include at most one polytechnic student, not of this course. It's not written, but I can tell you. Uh, at most one domain expert, if you want, this is optional and at least one extreme user. So if you get three people, one can be, if you want, a student of this university, one must be an extreme user, and the other one could be who, who you want, okay? But at most one polytechnical student, if you want one domain expert is fine, but no more than one, and for sure one extreme user. So that you have this type of um, of people in your interviews. And the extreme users is, can be defined according to what you, to, to various, according to various perspective, what is an extreme user. So if you can justify why the user you select is an extreme user in your context, is, is fine if you provide justification and reasonable motivation for that. three people or more, but at least three. Uh, modality in person, possibly with people in their context. 
So in a natural, what we call the in a natural situation. So don't ask people to come to your home, but go where the action is. And if you can also, it's written after, but if you can also have them show you something that's useful in a sort of contextual inquiry, you can also do that. Just not always talk, talk, but you can also say, please show me how this is going. This is fine. Hmm? Um, questions? Clearly, this is, needs to be a semi-structured interview. So you have to prepare some predefined questions for the interviews, suitable for the domain that you want. And here there are some suggestions, so try to understand why people are doing things in the way they are doing, etc. And be prepared to include new or follow-up questions, so in a semi-structured way. And in the lab, we can, the lab will be especially for helping you planning and giving you suggestions on how to create, verify with you if these questions you are preparing are fine or not. So don't forget that the labs, all the labs, except the one for feedback, are for supporting you and guiding you to, to do the right thing from the beginning. Um, and here is written, make an exact effort to interview some people in action, in the context. So if you can move towards a contextual inquiry for some user, so ask them to also do something, not only to speak, it's better. But the base, the base is an interview. Uh, material, hmm? also called apparatus. You need to record in some way, and you have to decide which is this some way, this way, what, how, and why interviews are saying and doing. So what you have to do is take some pictures of the interviews, of the people, of the action, what are, they are showing you, if they are showing you something, etc. that is the relevant artifacts. If they are showing you something, take a picture. If they are showing you, uh, I can make an example from last year. Last year we had a group that would like to investigate uh, financial, how people um, set the financial budget for the week. So they take picture of the sheet of papers or the, the Excel file where people plan the budget for the week of the family, for instance. So that is an artifact, something you can take a picture. Uh, audio record the interviews if possible, because you can re re listen them again if needed, if you miss some parts for any reason. And take notes of the questions and also the extra question that may uh, sort, they, may, they can, let's say, jump up during the conversation and clearly the main points of the answer. And then if you miss some points, you have the audio recording, so you can easily um, do that after the interview. Hmm? And here there's a footnote that is linked somewhere that say, notice that you will conduct at least two others interviews as part of the assignment too. So don't uh, use all the people that you know now because you need at least two others after, hmm? so in two weeks from now. Then, okay, this is planning, or everything that you have to prepare. It doesn't like my scrolling, okay. Then, you have to actually do the interviews. After you plan, you have to execute. And again, conduct a minimum of three interviews with the people you plan for, with that constraint we said before, no more than one polytechnical student, absolutely nobody from this course, uh, and at least one extreme user. And if you can do more interviews again, you can expect each interview to last between 30 and 60 minutes. Average. Typical length, it could be 20 minutes, it could be 50, it could be also slightly less than 30, but more or less an interview lasts around 30 minutes, especially if you ask them to show you something. 
the first things that you have to ask and to get from the interviews is permission. You are not going to record anybody or take a picture of everybody without their explicit written permission. So prepare a piece of paper in which you describe what you are going to collect as information. I'm going to ask, take pictures, etc. I will use it for a university course and have them sign it. Without that, you don't proceed. You cannot proceed. This is ethical procedure for all the uh, you, the, all the processes, all the studies that involves people. Procedure for executing uh, two team members and no more than three must be present at each interview. One leading the interview and the other one taking notes, taking, making pictures, etc. This means that you are, if you have a team of four, you can conduct the interviews in parallel. Two people, one person, other two people, another person. So you are more free to manage that. Uh, absolutely not all four people doing the same interview, because it's the four of you versus one other person. It's not appropriate and can bring anxiety and similar feeling to, to the interviews in some cases. So better to prevent. Um, and there is a tip that I remember the interview tips that we discussed yesterday. So the good questions, the bad questions, etc. And also what we are going to do uh, in the lab on Friday, where again, you will write some types of people, we write some questions, and we can give you uh, feedback, suggestions, that in that moment. Anything unclear? So this is how planning and executing interviews. Anything unclear, any question about that? Yes. You, you have to prepare a predefined set of questions, and then if you need to change something according to the people you interview, to the different type of people you interview, you can have specific sub-questions sub or specific small uh, additional question that is just for one person because maybe it's the, it's the expert and, doesn't, and needs other questions. But a, a bulk of questions should be shared between everybody. Then you can add others on avoid others, but a minimum core should be there. The interviews must be discussed. Yeah. With us. You and in your team and in your team with the teachers. Yes. You, well, if you have, you can do it in interviews in Italian, yes. Or you can do it in interviews in whatever language you want. But the, the results should be then translated in English. Clearly, if you have three people uh, in a team of four that doesn't speak Italian and you want to do the interviews in Italian, it's difficult to have one that takes notes, no? Because the other person speaks Italian, so that is, uh, let's say, an internal challenge that you have. So either you ask or you find participants that speak English so that you can um, relate with that, or you, you need to, to find some, some other way. But the interviews, by definition, can be also, if, if you can do interviews in Italian with people that speak Italian as a native language, you, Sometimes it's preferable because they can express better hmm, their language. But if it's not possible, you have to revert to English. So again, it depends on the exact composition of the group. OK? The, was the same. Yeah. So with us, again, with us in a group, uh, during the lab, if the group is made by people half speaking Italian, half speaking English, we are going to speak English. And if the group is entirely made in, from Italian people, you can choose which language you prefer. If you prefer with us to speak in English or Italian. But with external people, you have to try to speak a, a language that is understandable from the people that are involved. So 
if you have a majority of the group in English, it, you should probably do the interviews in English. Or you can help if the other person doesn't know well English, maybe the response in English, and you are in the Italian one, and he can get some suggestions how to say things from the, the Italian person to some tricks in that way also in the process, okay? Some work around. So we need to send the, the audio files, right? No, you need to collect. Okay, just the, the, the notes are... Uh, it's, what you have to send is written down, down. I, will, I will arrive in a moment. All these things, you have to collect them. So you have the audio file, because maybe you're missing something, you can listen again. Hmm? Just for us, yeah. In this moment, just, yes, for, for you, yeah. hmm? as the raw material. Uh, I will tell you what you have to submit by 12, but all this material, keep this material because you can use it maybe for the final report, if you need it. So keep all the material that you have. Other questions? Okay, then here there are three suggestions for fin finding participants. If you need it, you can clearly use your personal network without accessing with family members, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, etc. So again, not your, all your family for an interview. Uh, but friends of friends, for instance, are a good starting point, uh, or friends or your, of the person you, you live with, uh, if you share a room or in the same um, house on the same, on the same um, not college, clearly, but in the same place you, where you live. Uh, you can also use social media, and you can also find people in context. So typically, if you need to speak with someone, someone from a supermarket, you can go there and just <coughs> explain what you want, and typically, people are is kind. People are kind, so they will tell you yes. In some cases, they will tell you no, but... Um, most of the people will, will help you without any problem. Uh, so again, uh, last year we had a group that interviews people doing shopping, uh, uh, garment shopping, so they also had to speak with the uh, shopper owner, and in most cases the shopping owner say yes, it's not a problem, we can speak, with, they show, show them the various things. In other cases they told them no. But they go in to say auto ga the, aim, the gallery at Lingotto, and they will find you know some people say yes, but they next door they had another shop and they say yes, so it was easy for them to to navigate the space. But typically, if you ask people in place, they will be helpful if you don't want to sell anything or or anything else. Hmm? In many cases, interviews, planning, executing, then after all the interviews, what you need to do is to try to synthesize, to analyze the result. You will have this, let's say, three hours or something like that of recording, you have notes of different people, you need to put them together in some way. So this some way is um, try as a group, maybe between, before individually and then as a group, to brainstorm. So go close to a um, on the table, uh, physically or, or, not, or virtually, uh, and try, or a board, and try to brainstorm a list of needs that may emerge from the results, from the answer of your interviews. Hmm? So not the wants, but the needs. And this is a first list of initial user needs. Uh, and here it's explained, what, again, what is a need, and the difference, et cetera, and it can be helpful to use the phrases the person or the people need a way to, or needs to be able to, to specify needs, mm -hmm. uh, instead of solutions. And then if you brainstorm, and you came up with 10, 12, 100, it depends. User needs, you have to select the most insightful one, the most four, five insightful one to proceed. So, after all the results, you, after all the interview, you read the interviews, you reflect on the interview, discuss about different perspectives on your domain, and try to extract which are the needs, the key needs from 
the results of the interviews and try to narrow down four or five of these. What do you need to submit by the 12? By the 12, you need to submit a presentation in PDF, um, structured in this way. You can ch change a little bit something just to give you a structure, not to follow exactly letter by letter what is written here in this list. But more or less, you should start with an introduction, with a team member's name, they do mind of interest in one sentence saying why you choose it. So we were in the health and we choose uh, diabetes. Why? And we are these four people, choose lights. Then, page three, methodology, participants. Uh, who are the participants, how many, which type, all the things that you decided, just to report that. Uh, where the interviews were conducted, uh, the questions that you ask, the questions you need to plan for, um, the team role member for each interviews. So I, for interviews one, person one did the interviewer and the other one take notes, etc. And any material you used, just to report the list. Uh, we video recorded, we audio recorded, we take pictures, blah, blah, blah. What you decided to do. So the planning that you did in a few slides without too many details, just the, the main information here. Uh, the results of the interviews, so pictures of any of the people, of the, any relevant artifacts, etc., and maybe some key quotes. So some sentences that stem from the interviews and we are common or are particular or give you surprise or they are strange, something that is key quotes from the interviews. Respect your, your domain, not a joke that they tell you. And then one slide with the synthesis. So the, the four or five most insightful user needs, just to report that, and next steps. So how do you imagine to go? on. So you will maybe have four or five needs. If you need to take a stance and say, okay, I would like to explore more, all the four, one of that, two of them. This will depend from the needs that you extract, but also it depends from your personal perspective. So you can decide that maybe you have two needs about A and two needs about B, and you will decide, you will take a stance and say, we are more interested in follow up with A and not B. Hmm? That are the other two needs. So any hypothesis how you want to follow up in that domain? Hmm? Because the next assignment will be narrowing down the domain until reaching the project description. Hmm? So in the next assignment will be part need finding, part project definition. Hmm? So it will be more about synthesis, more than this. So this is for giving a first, uh, understanding of the domain and narrow it down a bit. And then the second one will narrow down a lot, starting from this. So this is just one slide, uh, one set of slides that you don't need to present. You just need, you just need to prepare it, put it in a directory called A1 in your assigned group repository. You will have an assigned group repository before uh, the 12 after the group composition phase is done. And this is needed for the feedback session. So you're not going to present it, but we are going to use it as a mean for discussion, for giving feedback to you. Hmm? Not this Friday, next Friday. Hmm? So this is an intermediate uh, set of information that you share with us. We can read it on the 13th, and then on the 14th, we can discuss group by group about the information that you put there and any question that you have, any suggestion that we have, any points that aren't clear in that presentation. Just as a way to, again, present and discuss things, to have something concrete to speak about. Uh, in that folder, uh, if you want, you can also add any other material that you preferred, maybe not the audio recording, but the consent form, the pictures, also the picture you didn't put in the presentation. You can add that in the directory. If you want, uh, it's, it's up to you. The directory is for, for the group to, to be used. Hmm? So, 
uh, we are not going to, to look at that, at that material, just at the presentation. So if you, if, you, if you need a space to share those things among you, you can also use the folder in that repository. And again, all, the, all of these will be useful when you are going to prepare the final report at the end of the course. But the information are this, no new information with respect to what you collect. Maybe just longer description than the one in the slides. Okay, any questions? Okay, this is assignment one. It's already online, you can read it uh, when you want. Um, oh, in the end of the assignments, there are three links, uh, how to build, again, other information, how to build um, questions for the interviews. Not something that is totally new. It's another way of telling the things that we already told you during the lectures, but maybe they are written in a longer form than a video or your notes, if you took notes the other day. But additional readings, not mandatory readings. Um, one thing about the feedback, since you are quite a lot, uh, we structured the feedback sessions in this way. The three of us, teachers, will be in the, in the room that is for the lab for all the 4.5 hours. And so each group can came at any moment during this four hour and a half. So if you, independent in which slot you are. So if you can, can come only in one slot, you clearly will go, will come there because you have overlaps with other lectures. But if you don't, you can came at the beginning, at the middle, towards the end. And the three of us will be there and the three of us will be speaking with just the groups of the slot. So I will speak with all the groups of the slot number two Alberto with all the groups number one, and uh, Tommaso with the groups of the slots number three. But we will use all the four hour and a half to do this conversation so that we can have 15, 20 minutes per group if needed. Okay. Uh, if we stay within the single slot, we will probably have four to five minutes per group. And so we use this uh, situation which the three of us will be present for all the hours in our perspective for four hour and a half. In your perspective, you need to be there while you wait, and maybe you can do other things when, you, when we speak with us, and then you can leave. Or you can stay and do other things. But for, for our purpose, the important moment is when you speak with us in that 15, 20 minutes. And then the room is there, you can stay, you can go. It's up to you. Okay? This is something that will happen next week, not this one. And this is the same structure that we will have for all the feedback session to give you more time, to give us more time to, to, to explain and to give feedback to you. And feedback, again, is needed for proceeding with the next step of the process. So if you do some mistakes now, you can amend it in the description or be ready to amend it in the next step of the process, or at least um, tickle a little bit, consider a little bit some different op opinion and perspective before moving forward. Uh, so before doing the exercise in this, or starting to do the exercise in this half an hour, um, some administrative, yeah, well, assignment one is out and it's due the 12th of October, end of the day. And again, end of the day means 11.59 p.m of the 12. Uh, again, Friday's lab is for preparing the interviews for the planning part. Um, Monday, we will have the class as usual, but Tuesday, October 11, we will not have a teaching class, but we will available, one of us will be available in the room, it is not this room, but in 70, for your group work. We will make that hour and a half for your group work. That means that you can use that time to do interviews, you can use that time to finalize the presentation, you can use that time to sleep, whatever. You can also use that time to come in the room and work on something. The room is there, there will be somebody in the room 
for any questions and clarification. But we are not going to, we are not doing lecture in that moment, nor exercise. It's time for you. So if you need the space and the power outlets of the room, you can use it. If you have anything else better to do, it's up to you. Uh, well, clearly, um, also the student hours that are every Wednesday, almost every Wednesday, 10, 11 a.m., are an, op an option for this or for any other assignment in the future. Um, but not for the 12th of October, unfortunately. Okay? So on Monday we will have class. On Tuesday you can use that hour and a half for the course or for whatever you, you want. But we are not proceeding with the topic of the course on that day. But we will be available, so there will be somebody in the class in any case. So it's an, an hour and a half of the course. It's just not a lecture. It's more a supervised work group. Okay. Any other questions so far? Otherwise, we will proceed with an exercise. No? Good. So here, I'm going to play a, a part, maybe. So this is a, an interview uh, that has mistakes in it. So the exercise is, I'm going to play the video. I can also enable captions, or they are already enabled. Mm. The video is six minutes long. We can stop before the end of six minutes. But the, the game is this one, the exercise is this one. Every time you see an error, you uh, raise your hand, I will pause the video, and you tell me which is the error hmm? in the interview. So errors are in the question that are made, OK? Are you ready? Yes, good. Now the audio will be terribly high or low, for sure, so I will fix it, but. Yeah, they didn't do the, the, the constant form. Uh, it's fine, no, it's, it's, true. it's right. We, we don't know, I, I, I haven't watched the other, because in the next slide, there is the correct video. So here, there is the video with mistakes, and the other one that we are not going to see, but if you want, you can, there is the right video. So yes, one point is to sign up a constant form. We don't know if they sign up in this moment, or uh, it's part, already sign up before entering the room. But yeah, it's, it's something that is missing. Question? Mm -hmm. That's a small error, yes. But yes, it is. The same? The same. Yes. Okay. Um, did you enjoy the training? It's a yes, no question. And, and now there is another one, so we can. Would you say that you enjoyed it a little bit, a medium amount, or a lot? I enjoyed it a lot. Great, okay. And um, did you learn something by the training? Yes, I did, excellent, okay. Uh, she was just curious already that she learned something from the training. Yes, and then also was a yes, no question, so both, both things. Um, and would you recommend it to a friend? <laughs> yes, 
Yes, that also a, a little bit, I, I, I'm going to repeat for the recording. Yes, that could also be um, uh, a mistake, no? Trying to, not only suggesting the answer, but also when the answer is the right one, saying, oh, great, do you want a candy for that? So uh, uh, a positive, uh, um, excellent, great, wonderful, instead of more neutral, thanks, and we can continue. So we, we never see right now the, oh, it's terrible. We only see the bright side, excellent, good, great, never the, the negative, but maybe we will see it. Yes, I will, great. Um, and, and clearly all of these are yes, no question again, so. Okay, so can you give me an example of something you learned? Uh, for example. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, that is not really more or less, because uh, at the beginning, uh, she said that they are there to speak about the charting training, the chart training that she did as a nurse. So learning in the chart training, that was, but here there is another mistake, so huge mistake, so you see that. She's not giving her time to respond. She's not giving time to respond. So the person will say, mm, was trying to thinking, and she immediately say, for example, some people have learned that Etc. And also, clearly, some people have learned is giving suggestion from the answer. Yes, it's also giving yeah, possible alternative for the answer. No? Suggesting the answer before answering. So a series of, you are good in this game. She's, she's doing the, she, she is doing the interviews. Yeah. She is answering all her questions, yes. She's speaking too much, yes. It will stop, she will stop, hopefully. Ah, we, we don't know, but yeah. She's not taking notes, but maybe there is anybody, somebody else that is taking notes or recording, yes. This, this could be uh, an error, but um, we, we don't know exactly the, the context in this video. Uh, clearly, the, the mistakes referred here are more the ones that you spot on with the questions, not giving time, the, not the, the consent form that may or may not have been signed before or the recording, okay? Uh, it's not entirely terrible, this video. It does some parts, hmm? so. So she, yes, she's, I think that she's recording or she's looking at the smartphone, or the phone, or she's recording. So let's stay with the, the recording. She wasn't recording, she was looking at the phone, yes. So this is another huge error of so having people speaking and just don't mind. Yes, the question could have been shorter. Also, she's trying to make her think about something she did in the past and describe it. Uh, so maybe a response will not be that uh, the day of uh, uh, the last message. 
yeah, this is not, I don't think that this is a, a, big, a big problem in this context because she's asking her not to think about, yes, yeah, something in, did in the past, but we, we sometimes need to because it's not always, I mean, if, if she is doing an observation, clearly this is not a problem. Uh, but she's, the question is, that is long, but the question is, do you do so, did, you did, did you do something differently because of the training? So which is the impact of the training on your daily activity? This is a, a reasonable question. Hmm? Uh, just to understand if the training also give information, a, a stop, or give also change the way of this person is working. Hmm? So this is a reasonable with all the, the problems that this question could lead to. She has to remember, she has to interpret, et cetera, but it's, it's a reasonable as a, as a question. So the training, um, so what are they doing in the sense of the training? There must be something that we did that they didn't do in the past. Go. Yes, uh, here is criticizing more that the person is asking, so do you want to know, since the question was long, do you want to know if I did something different? And she said, there must be something that you did differently. It's impossible that you didn't do anything differently. That is, and what if she didn't do anything differently? So this is clearly critical. Yeah. Was this? Let's continue for a few minutes and then. Yeah, they give an option again and again. Yes, and the same error as before, just repeat it. Yes. She's giving the answers. Speaking software, uh, longer time with patient, being more empathetic, give answer. Spending longer time with patients or um, being more empathetic and more or any any So I give you three options. You pick one, the one, the two on the three, and say great, incredibly. Um, okay, but you are good in this game, so we can we can stop it. Um, the, the video continues for another six, mi three minutes. If you want to to spend three minutes after the class, you can continue to play this game. But you spot the error. So now, after spotting the error, and be able to recognize the next step is be able to avoid the same errors. Okay. Um, the next step in your project. So, and in the slides, if you, if you want to, to listen, we maybe are going to just listen a little bit. Um, the, let's say the correct version of the same interview with the same people. Hmm? Just, no. So notice this was, wasn't, this, this is, isn't crucial in many cases, but uh, in this professional setting, uh, trying to, this person, can I call you Shane or Shay? It depends the, if the captioners are right. Before, just cast the name, and she say, I'm called Shane Bloomer, and that's it. Now the interviewer is also asking, can I call you Shane, that is the first name, trying to, set up a more, let's say, intimate or a more less formal, more informal setting. And this is a professional place. So that is a nurse that the, the, the person that give her the job asks to do this with a company, external company. So it's really 
professional setting, formal setting. So this person is trying to put uh, Shay or Shane in a more nice environment for having the conversation. And so less, more, more in com comfortable place. Hmm? So this is something that they didn't do before. Um, and Shay, what do you do for a living? What's your profession? I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse. How long have you been nursing? I've been a nurse for 12 years. Oh, interesting. So first I'd like to start out and just kind of get your immediate reaction to the training, your memories of, of how it felt to be in the training. Um, what was your favorite part of the training and your least favorite part of the training? Well, So you, you already see hmm, one favorite things, one least favorite things to, to say. Not some, but one. Hmm? And, and she gives the interviewees time to answer all the time that she needs to. Hmm? And it, maybe if you notice, this is a 14 minutes video. The other one was six with the same set, more or less set of questions, same topic covered, just in a different way. Clearly giving option and interrupting people make things faster. Instead, not giving option, uh, asking for open comments, wait for the people to answer will require more time. That's why I told you that an interview will last 30 to 60 minutes, because if you are in a rush and you interrupt people, also five minutes, fine, but if you give space people to talk, they will uh, use all the available time. And so, typically, um, so 30, 60 minutes is a more reasonable range, okay? So I'm not going to, to continue with this video, otherwise we are spending all the time just looking at the video. Uh, but you get the difference already between the previous one, where uh, the interviewer interrupt people, et cetera, et cetera, and this one. Hmm? Uh, this video here. But again, the link is there if you want to, to spend three plus for 15, 15, 14 minutes, you can. So let's do another, let's start to do another exercise more, steep, more similar to the one that you are going to do in the, in the lab. Um, so the theme is transportation. Hmm? That is the equivalent of the digital well-being. AR, VR for education, and AI meets human, transportation. And we are going to use, as a specific domain, women who use public transit. That is the specific domain you, the equivalent of the specific domain you are going to select. So we are, in the domain of transportation, we will focus on public transit, not private transit, not sharing, public transit, and as part of the population, women. And want to understand which are the, with the needs that women who use public transit can have, have hmm? while using public transit. Hmm? It's an exercise, so who is, who is who we are going to recruit for these interviews? which type of users we are going to, inter to interviews for. Don't say women. <laughs> yeah, clearly, yes, we are going to involve women, but be more precise, specific. Mm. Commuters. Students in general. Students that com commute. Okay, so uh, yes, commuters. Uh, commuters that are women, mostly, and of different ages. Students, different ages, uh, professions, students, not students, etc. And these are the intermediate user. We can continue, but these are the intermediate user. 
um, the extreme user. Who can be an extreme user? The bus driver. The bus driver. He is, is not an, inter an intermediate user, maybe he's not even a woman, but is an extreme user because he sees or she sees what happens on the public transit with women. So it can give another perspective that is different from the commuter's one. Hmm? Um, and can also be the domain expert in a sense. It's the domain expert for public transportation. Uh, other extreme users that you can think of Uh, they are not, um, they are still here. Um, let's say, um, eh, yes, um, I know that the word in Italian is that. Um, um, people who live close or more distant from the workplace. So either commuters, but still commuters, just commuters that, live, that take a bus, 50 minutes, or they take a train from another region or another area. Let's call it ticket checkers. I don't know how it's called, actually, but they can be extreme, extreme users because they are, are see some situations. Hmm? Let's try to write one more line or one more. People who drive to work, why? Because they don't use public transportation. It's really extreme as a user in that sense. Because they don't, they are probably not women and not using, it's probably not in the, in the core set of people that uh, I would interview. If you maybe have, you know, if you can interview a lot of people and you have time, you can also include other perspective from people that don't use public transportation to see why they don't use public transportation, but we are in this moment trying to understand which are the needs of women that are using public transportation. So not using is, could be also by some assumption or preconcepts, etc. It is another story, it's, it's a story, but it's another story. Yes, we can probably continue with this. You know, trying to enlarge different ages, different profession, different abilities, different profession, different works already there. Mostly women, etc. Okay, we we can stay here and think for another ten minutes, but. Uh, we don't have time. So this is a first nice bulk of target users. It's good. Then we want to plan the interview. Um, and we need to decide, we don't need to decide now, but in, in theory, in your mind, you need to decide all these things. To whom? Moving from commuters of different ages to a specific set of people. Which are the different ages? Is 15 years old fine? Is 90 years old fine? And everything in the middle, you want to rest it a little bit, enlarge a little bit, which profession? How, how, how is the profession important in this context? Is it really important or is it just student, non-student, et cetera, taking this decision and then actually recruiting people because you, you need to do the interviews. Uh, we say that it's one-to-one -one interviews we need to decide the general structure of the interviews, 
how many questions we more or less plan to, say, to, to ask, this predefined one, and we need to write the questions. And if we want to have question of follow-ups or not, we typically won't, and how we do the recording. This is the same structure that you have in the assignment text. So we need to decide all of, it, all of this, and then we can structure the interview. So the interview can be structured, uh, let's say, in these four main bullet points that can be in this order or in, another, in other orders. Uh, so you start with introduction, as in the video. You introduce yourself, you explain why you're there, you can say this interview is lasting more or less 20 minutes, 30 minutes, to set the right expectation. Uh, we are not testing you, you are helping us the, ask for permission, ask for permission for recording, start the recording, etc. all the introductory part. Then you can have two sets of questions, a set of, the question about the topic and the question about the person. Uh, in the interview that we have seen before, we had some question about the person. How long you are working as a nurse? 12 years. That is a question about the person, not about the topic. And they can be shift. It could be before the people, before the topic, etc. And the question about the topics, again, are the so, some are the same for everyone. Some depends on the user, the extreme user we have seen before. We have seen before. Different types can have different, slightly different set of questions. And in the question about the topics, you can have this, the, you can have, it's not mandatory, but you can have these steps. You start from the background, you start for understanding the context, then you try to go deep in the context once you get an overview of the topic, of the interest, you go deep. Then you ask a clarification, then you can ask success, failures, what is working, what is not, the best thing, the worst thing, etc. And typically towards the end, you can have some additional reflections. So something that, what do you think about? Uh, you can have questions about the user. And finally, thank you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So concluding the interviews. As I said to you yesterday, try to imagine an interview like a story, a narration, that start with an introduction and ends with the conclusion of everything. And in the middle, you have positives, negatives, uh, the story that unfold. And the story can unfold in this way. Introduction, you start wide from the background, big open question, and then you narrow down also the questions, the introduction, you maybe give options, you ask more specific things, maybe in the clarification, the success and the failure are more specific things than understanding the general background in which this person is. And then you can do the same for a question about the users. Uh, which are the possible questions about the user that we can ask? Let's write one of them. Just one, about our users, the, the commuters, women, etc. One interesting question that we can ask. How often they... Yes, how often they use the public transit. Because you can have people that use maybe once per week, every day, multiple times a day, once per month, etc. That is a question about the user. To understand who are the person you're speaking with. To put in context the other answer. If a person that uses the public transit once per month tells you something, and the person that uses the public transit every day tells you something totally different, there are two different perspectives, and you have to include in this perspective the personal story of this person. So one that is using the public transit multiple times per day will have certain perspective and certain experience. And the one that uses it one per month will see less things that happens because it happens rarely. And you can also write here other questions. So you define the structure, the topics you want to ask, and then we are not going to do that here you can write the actual questions for all this part. Hmm? So, which is one, let's say, one, two, 
introductory questions, one to background question, one to going deep question, then gratification, then reflection, a few questions about the user, and one thank you conclusion questions. Hmm? There can be, as reported in the slide, uh, did we forget to ask you something? Do you want to add something else? That is a question that can be done at the end for eliciting other information. Hmm? And this question is also in the slides that we did yesterday, so you can find them out. Hmm? Okay, so it's, uh, it's basically time to wrap up the, 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 the class. Um, I will put the, the slightly updated uh, slides online of this, and we will meet on Friday in the labs. For the first lot, you will not see Alberto, but I will be there just for this week for the first lot, and also for the second one, and then in the third slot will be Tommaso there. If you have any question, I'm still here for five minutes while I'm plug everything, otherwise, have a nice day.